Hey everyone, it's Chris Newman from the spreadsheetguru.com here to start off episode two in my brand new video series where I take you behind the scenes on how I build Excel add-ins. If you haven't seen the first episode, I encourage you to watch that first before diving into this one. In that episode, I kind of explain what add-in I'm gonna be building, um, some of the design and features that the add-in will contain so uh, pretty important from a context perspective to understand that before we get into episode two but in this episode we're going to go through and design some of the user forms that will be in the add-in so i hope you enjoy watching me kind of go through that process and uh, let's get into it hey everyone in this episode we're going to start out by trying to build some of the user forms for this add-in in the last episode, I showed you how I was mocking up the initial thoughts on what the user forms would look like. So let's uh, dig in and try to build some of these guys out. So first, I'm going to open up the Visual Basic Editor. And I'm going to try to split screen this guy. First, let's make a user form. So I'm going to right click here and insert my user form. And I'm gonna make it pretty big. And let's tackle this initial user form that's gonna store all the num number formats and give us some options to create, edit, and delete. So I'll first start with drawing a list box. And then for the buttons, to make it not look like this, which I hate these buttons. They're ugly. They look like they're from the 90s. Um, we're actually going to use images. I'm going to draw that like right here. And what I can do is copy one of these shapes. So I use Control c to copy. I'll click on this image, I'll go down the picture, and do Control v to paste. And to pretty this up a little bit, I will take out the border, I will make the background transparent, and then I'll just tighten this up a little bit. Now usually I just put temporary images in, and then when I'm kind of polishing up towards the end of uh, the add-in creation, once I've got everything kind of working smoothly, I'll go in and really kind of true up my graphics and make sure I have everything the way I want it. Um, one thing I really like to do is make these gray backgrounds white. So if I click this user form and I can go to the palette and choose white, and I use white because it's really easy to um, match the background with uh, all my images that I'm using. So you'll notice if I turn that background to black, uh, you can't really see. But there's a little white peeking out around the corners of this. Um, so essentially, if you're going to use the images as buttons, you need to make sure the background, so if I wanted a black background, I would want to make the background in Excel black as well. And I'll make sure those corners on any curves are matching the background of our user form. But I usually go with white because it's nice and clean, and that's kind of the, the color background I prefer. So I'm just gonna use my control key and copy this down to match my buttons. And I'll go ahead and copy the other buttons in here. And again, just using Control C to copy and Control V in that picture property to paste it in. And we can do the same thing for these arrows. So I'll use my control key 
and let's pull this arrow in here. And this one you can really see has that white background with the cutout. And I will tighten that up a little bit. Put that right there. And use control. And let's bring in that bottom arrow. And there we go. We're kind of getting pretty close to the way we want it. Um, usually I'll tweak this as I'm testing as well based on how the uh, number formats are looking populated in the list box. Um, I'll play around with spacing a little bit. Um, so on this I don't think I'll have a save or close. I think all the edits will be made in real time for the moment so I'll probably remove some of this white space down here. Um, I might I try to make it as compact as possible but also allowing space between all the objects so it's kind of clear what you're clicking. Um, also let's put a little label Whoa. right here and we'll just this will kind of be the title for this list box so we'll just call this custom number format list see how that looks then usually with my titles I like to definitely make them bold so to get to the bold property you can click font down here and there's some more options and I'll probably make let's see what 10 looks like yeah I like that then I also try to kind of center it within the height a little bit and sometimes it likes to snap to the grid so you might want to come down here and play with entering in the height a little bit manually so that looks like it's centered but usually I'll kind of do the nitpicky stuff, like I said, towards the end. And then finally for this one, we'll want to get rid of this user form one. So I'll make sure I'm clicked on here and change that caption. And I mentioned in the first video, I'm just calling this the number formatter for now. We'll just call this the manager. I'm still working on a cool name. Who knows, maybe I'll just stay the number formatter. So that's that's going to give me my first um, user form, the duplicate. Uh, one thing I haven't done yet, which I won't show in this video, but I'll need to go through all these and give them uh, names that make sense. So I'll probably call this like the, the new button and so on. But I won't bore you with, with all that. So... Um, let's also make this user form have a meaningful name so I can determine what it is easily over in the project window. So I'll just call this the list manager. You can see that changes there. And let's move on to the next user form, which is going to be the user form we use to create an edit and I'll have to think through if I want to make two separate user forms for the new and the edit button or if I want to try to use one and make it a little more dynamic so let's build another user form And we'll just say we're going with create right now. And let's make that background white. There we go. And we'll just say create new number format. And in this, we're going to have labels. So we'll just start from the top and do format name. 
let's make that transparent and bold and 10. There we go. I think we're working with 14 as the height. That looks good. And a little trick, if I don't want to keep having to do those same form, the formats, so making the background transparent and the font bold, uh, just copy your labels. Um, and I never pay attention to the code name for the labels because I typically never change them. Um, so I don't really mess around with that. It's more the stuff you're changing is what you have to really worry about with the code names because that's what you're going to reference in your VBA code. So let's do number formats for this guy. And we have a little reminder right here. So I'm going to copy that and that's going to actually be a new label. We're going to make that a little smaller. We're going to make that italicized. And we'll have to play around with the positioning a little bit to get it to line up nice and neat for there. And next we have a frame. So I'm going to pull in frame right here. And we can make the caption say alignment. And we'll make that big and bold as well. And then we're going to get some option buttons in here. And I want to click inside the frame so it's part of the frame. Let's fix the formatting. And that's going to be my left. And we can just use control, hold down control and drag. And those will be my four option buttons. And then I can come down here. This will be my ribbon icon. Let's put these text boxes. Oh, I got position. And let's put in the text boxes now. Those should be pretty easy. And again, we'll clean up kind of the spacing and all that later. I'm more concerned with getting the general feel. It looks like we probably could bring in this user form a little bit more. Now for this, I'm going to use images again. So we'll have a create button that I'll paste in there. And then usually my bottom button, if I don't have like a, a cancel or anything, I will want to make that center to the user form so I can click this. And I didn't realize this for the longest time, but there's all these alignment buttons available to us. So I can kind of center it automatically, get it there. Before I was doing like pixel math and it took forever and I still can't believe I, I did that for the longest time. And then we're going to kind of make a folder icon. And what I'm going to do for that is let's see if we can get an icon from Excel. We got a nice folder there. Can make it like this orange color. Make it kind of small. And then I will turn off the grid line so I have that white background. And I'll copy and let's see how this looks. Sometimes you have to play around with the size. That's actually pretty good. So it's, if that was too big or too small, then I'd have to come back here and kind of tweak it and keep copying and pasting until I had it the right size. And again, I'll perfect this a little later on in the process, but that's good enough for now. I will kind of consolidate this. Uh, when I am cleaning this up, I'll probably do a lot of a lot more alignments. So I'll, I'll select my stuff. Um, 
and use a lot of these alignment options that we can do. So we can kind of make those all to the left and usually I'll, I want to make my widths the same as the longest text box is. Um, but that's pretty good for this one for now. And one thing uh, that's a little annoying with the images is when you double click them, it used to give you the click action for VBA, but they changed it to this, which is useless for me. Um, so you actually have to go in here, and they actually don't even have it in the drop down anymore. So you literally have to type in click to get your uh, your click uh, action in there. So it's it's pretty annoying to have to do that for all of them, but that's uh, what we have to do nowadays. I asked Microsoft, and they pretty much gave me a stupid answer that they don't want you clicking pictures anymore. They want you clicking only buttons. Um, and my response is make better looking buttons and we'll use the buttons. But uh, this is a good example with this folder icon. Um, it makes a lot more sense to have this folder icon than just to have a button. That will take a lot more space and that says folder on it. So um, I don't agree with what they did, but luckily they didn't get rid of the click event altogether. Um, so I, I can still use the in my add-in. So that's uh, the user form piece. I'm going to work on some of the VBA stuff and come back and, and show you guys a little bit of what I've come up with. Typically, when I'm doing a lot of this, I know I have enough knowledge to figure it out myself, but I do a lot of Googling uh, to try to work off of other people's code and modify it to do what I, I needed to do. Um, so a lot of it I'm not uh, doing from scratch. So I'll probably, um, I don't do a lot of list working. So sometimes if I've had an add-in that I've worked on in the past with a, with a list, I'll go back and see what code I have that I can kind of copy and tweak. Or I will just uh, go out to Google and search some forums and see what I can find out there to give me a good starting point. So I'm going to end it right here. Um, we'll come back and see what kind of VBA I'm able to come up with.